where Amen. two or three are gathered together oh, in his name. Just need two or three. Yeah. There yes, he indeed. is. Yes, indeed. We still got time yes, for testimony. Yes, Thank indeed. you. Yes, indeed. Sister Pat. Praise, God. Praise him. Oh, Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. In that tone, I, I just want to testify about what happened on my job last week. I um, had got a call Monday morning that uh, uh, my, my um, labor relations specialist, part of my union, he passed away Sunday morning. Um, he went to the doctor, wasn't feeling well, went to the doctor Saturday. They asked, um, they wanted to do an invasive surgery on him. And he said, no, can you do a non-invasive? And they said, given your age, we're not sure if that's the right way, but you can consult with your doctor and get back to us, come back to us. Well, he made a schedule with his doctor for the following week, this week. But he, God took him home Sunday morning, early Sunday morning. Then I got a call late on the afternoon that a coworker of mine who worked with me, um, she, um, they were both at work the week before. They went to work Friday. She was at work Friday. And then Saturday, she had a stroke and passed. So that was, that was two, uh, two tragedies in a week. So I'm saying, we never know. God is calling us. God is taking us away one by one. If you only, if you, and we don't, there's no um, telling. It could be me. Like the football player a couple of weeks ago. He actually died twice, but God, uh, he was re revived. But God, I know, brought him back for the whole, say, one day, say, I was thinking about the scripture. You have spiritual eyes, you can see these things. He said, we know that all the football players in the world was praying for this guy. And guess what? They was all on their knees. And I thought about the scripture, every knee shall bow and tongue confess because they were praying in Jesus' name. And God showed them what he can do because they thought he was gone. They all crying. They thought he was gone. When he left that, when he left that field, they thought he was gone. But three days later, he woke up. He woke up three days later, so every eye saw what God can do. Every eye was on him. Every eye saw that. I mean, well, the world saw that. So every one day, we don't know. The scripture says that we, 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 we picture it, God coming like a giant in the sky. We don't know how God's going to come. But those with spiritual eyes can see. Every eye saw God brought that young man back to life. They saw it. So I just want to praise God for my life. I'm, I'm thankful for every day I wake up. I really am. And to get to the point now, I'm thankful for every breath that I take. It comes from God. God is the air that we breathe. Every breath comes from God. And we just got to take these little things, these little moments that we take for granted. I was, I was testifying um, when I was I'm going through my diabetes and I had a sleep apnea and I had acid reflux. And I say in the middle of the night, you, you stop breathing, the acid comes up and it clogs your, 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 your throat. Your, yeah, your esophagus, and you can't breathe. And if I didn't have the ability, my, my mind, because you, you, you pretty much sleep, you stop breathing. If my mind didn't have the ability to, 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 to like a defibrillator, wake me up. If I didn't have my legs to stand on my feet, I could very well have died in my sleep. Because it wasn't, cause someone taught me that, you know, you stand up, hold your, hold your lung, hands over your, hold your lungs up, hands over your head so the air can get down. I didn't know that at first. I thought I was having an asthma attack. And that is the most scariest feeling. And you never know when it's going to hit you. So I'm just saying, it could have been me. I could have died in my sleep, as we hear so many people. So that's my testimony. Every, every, I'm thankful for every day I wake up. And, and, I, and I, um, I am asked that you do the same. Praise the Lord. 628.
Amen. To God be the glory. Great things there. there. Come on, put your hands together and thank the Lord for this one day. For this one more day. One more day. Bless you. One more day. Has he not been good to you? Has he not been good to you? <clears throat> Listen, I, 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 really, I really wanted to save this to, to Sunday, but sometimes it's hard to save to Sunday. Uh, I, I, I've, I've been on cloud 99, as, as uh, old saint used to say. He, he used to tell me, I said, how you feeling? She said, I'm on cloud 99. I don't, I don't even know what that cloud is, but I know that it meant she felt good. And I, and, and I, I felt so good on Sunday. You blessed me so much. I kept talking so I, I wouldn't cry. I just kept talking and I just kept talking. And it was such, such a good feeling to know uh, that you were celebrating my birthday. And I was like, wow, this is, this is awesome, awesome, and awesome. I, 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 can't, I can't even thank you guys enough of the love that came out uh, of that. It was just wonderful. Yeah, Jim? Yep. They just, they just, <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't even counting the people at the food. I was counting the basket that they had. <laughs> yeah. So that's what... So the Lord, the Lord, he just, it, was just, it was just that much. It was just that much. And my family uh, was thankful. My daughter had a birthday on Monday. Uh, she turned 26, and she was uh, doing well. And uh, she, it, she actually came uh, to church on because she goes to Mission Life uh, uh, with, her, with her friend. Uh, she runs the media uh, for, uh, at Mission Life. And so, but she said, I'm going to take off, and I'm going to come and, and sit with my father on his birthday. So it was really Really exciting, 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 exciting. And all of your faces and all of your smiles uh, were well appreciated in that. Amen. And I praise God for this church and I praise God for you individually. I know I talked to probably every last one of you uh, if you were there. I kind of walked up to you and they said, aren't you going to eat? I said, I eat when I'm finished talking to these people <laughs> who have been blessing me since I've gotten here. So I thank you so much for that. What, 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 uh, what chapter are we in? <clears throat> chapter 10. Good. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we bow our heads. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. You have been so good to us. Thank you for bringing us together this one more time, one more again, as Mama used to say, and we thank you for giving us traveling mercy to the church. Bless those who are on their way. Uh, Dear Heavenly Father, give them traveling mercy as you have done us, but give us a special blessing for because we are on time and we thank the Lord in Jesus name we pray amen. amen amen we are we are running through this uh this this book already we are in chapter 10 uh and I actually incorporated uh a, a, a reader so I could read those names no I, I'm gonna need that right now I'm gonna come I'm get so I could read those names because I, I have anybody read chapter 10 yet and you see all those names that they got down here? Well, you know what? I'm going to press this button, and we're going to go, and I'm going I'm to read it as, as long as I can. Then I'm going to go back, and we're going to talk about it, okay? Uh, and we're going to talk about it. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me get my mic on, and I want to I wanna read this right off. I'm in J-Pat. And unto them were sons born after the flood. Genesis 10. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshech, and Taras. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Riphat, and Tagama. And the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, Ketim, and Dodanim. But these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Phut, and Canaan. And the sons of Cush, Seba, and Havilah, and Sabta, and Ramah, and Sabteca, and the sons of Ramah, Sheba, and Dedan. And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Erech, and Akkad, and Calneh in the land of Shinar. Out of that land went forth Ashur, and builded Nineveh, and the city Rehoboth, and Kalah. 
and resin between Nineveh and Kalar, the same is a great city. Now I'm going to stop it right there. Uh, see, uh, would we be able to get through that? No, not me. Not me. Maybe y'all could have got, but I couldn't get through it. Let's go back up. We're going to talk about some of it. I'm not going to try to pronounce none of the names. I'm telling y'all that right now. Uh, I might, yeah, I might go N and R and P and EJ and all that kind of good stuff. <coughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly what it sounds like. All right, now, now this is the genealogy uh, of the sons of Noah, and it just talks about uh, uh, this, mark, this may mark another transition in the records that Moses collected uh, to compile the book of Genesis. So this is just records that he is actually adding to the book of Genesis that we might know what had happened or at least the, the, the generations that came after the flood. God told humanity to multiply after the flood, and this indicates that they did exactly that. You see how many people are having all these? Now, now look. Shem, Ham, Japheth, we know those names. Those are the sons of Noah. We got them down, but then they start naming all the other sons and, and the grandsons and things of that nature. And watch this. <clears throat> so that means cousin was with cousin. All right, so it, hopefully, and, and, and I, think, I think this didn't become a real uh, problem to later on in Leviticus, but, the, but hopefully they weren't sister on sister, but, uh, or brother on brother, or brother on sister and things of that nature. But I think they were. So it all depends on where they were. So that's, I'm just letting you know about that. Now I'm in verse number two, and it says the sons of Jephthah. Now he was the father of the Indo-European people, all right? Uh, those, those stretching from India to the shores of Western Europe, they are linked by linguist similarities. In other words, it often seems invisible to the layman, but as much as obvious to the linguist. In other words, those people who speak the same kind of language, some of that stuff, it is in, you know how some things come from Latin and some things come from Spanish and some things come from uh, the older languages, Greek and things of that nature. So uh, they were all similar in the way they talked. Gomer from the son of Japheth came the Germanic people, Germanic people rather, uh, from Germany, uh, from whom uh, came most of the original peoples of Western Europe. This includes the original French, the Spanish, and even the Celtic settlers. That's, that's uh, Irish. Uh, these settled in the far north, those of Magog and Tubal and Meshesh, those, those people, and they became Russian people. Uh, so some of that stuff, uh, I'm just trying to, try, we're trying to show how we, they populated the earth in this, in this part. Uh, Madai from the son of Japheth came the ancient Medes, and they populated, which is now known as Iraq and Iran. Uh, the people of India also came from this branch of Japheth's family. Javan, uh, from this son of Japheth, came the ancient Greek, who was seafaring ways are uh, described in Genesis 10 and, and 10 and 5. Uh, Akesh, Akeshnes, I'm, okay, I'll keep on rolling. From the son of Goma uh, came the people who settled North Judea, what we call Fertile Crescent. Uh, from this son of Togoma, uh, from this son of Gomer came the Armenians. Uh, the sons of Javan and Lish, they talk about them. Geographical names that spring from these names in the chapter bound linguists have no trouble seeing the connection between Katim and Radam. All, all I'm reading all this stuff off to show you everybody, everything was related. You could see it just branching off and going to their different directions and that and that. Then it talks about in the sixth, <clears throat> in the sixth chapter or the sixth verse, it talks about the sons of Ham. Now, the reason I'm stopping here or really talking about this is because I looked at a book that Brother Tally had, and it showed all the people of color that were uh, mentioned in the Bible, uh, and, and he, Ham was one of them. These descendants of Ham uh, are the people who populated Africa and the Far East. So Africa and the Far East, even Cush, because I can pronounce that, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Pr Cush, apparently... This family divided into two branches early. Some found in Babylon, notably Nimrod. Now, I, had to, I wanted to pause at Nimrod because we've heard that name before. We just didn't know it was biblical. You know, for, when folk call you a Nimrod, that's not a good thing. Okay? But this was a name of a person. And, and many, many families, if I would dare say any families, have named their children Nimrod. You know, they come up with a whole bunch of names, but Nimrod is not one of them because Nimrod carries a, a bad deal. Uh, now, it says, Cush begot Nimrod. One, of, one son of Cush 
worthy of note. In other words, they stopped talking about the genealogy to talk about this guy. They stopped, talk, they stopped running down the family tree so they could talk about this guy Nimrod. So it must be important what he had to do or what he did. All right, what he did. Watch this. I'm going to read some of this is what, uh, what we wrote down. <clears throat> the Bible says he was a mighty one on the earth, but not in a good way. I want, to, I want to stop y'all right now because you could, you could read some of it and you might think he had something going on, but he didn't. We are in the, we are in the 7th uh, to 12th verse of the, of the 10th chapter of Genesis. Uh, he was a mighty man, but not in a good way. He ruled over Babel. He ruled over Babel, which was the first organized rebellion of the humans of God. In other words, People, we knew that before the flood, everybody was evil. But everybody was evil in their own way. This joker, and I call him a joker, organized the rebellion. In other words, he got together where everybody was on the same page rebelling against God. Right, we'll show you how later on. Watch this. Like Nimrod, the Bible says this, like Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, the context shows that this is not a compliment of Nimrod. It says, like Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, even though that sounds like a good thing, it is not. Let me, let me tell you why. The idea is that Nimrod was an offense before God. This is not talking about Nimrod's ability to hunt wild game. That's not his ability. That's not what he's getting, he getting publicized about. He was not a hunter of animals. He was a hunter of men. Okay? All right, so, so I want you to understand that, that this is not, when they call him a mighty hunter uh, 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 before the Lord, it is not a good thing. He's a hunter of men. He's a hunter of men, a warrior. It was though, uh, uh, through his ability to fight and to kill and to rule ruthlessly that his kingdom of Euphrates Valley city states were consolidated. In other words, he was doing like Putin. Whatever was around him, he was trying to conquer. You know, they will tell you, they will tell you about uh, 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 Putin and tell you how good of leader he is. But leader in what way? They, would talk, they talked about Adolf Hitler and how he was able to get people to do what he wanted them to do. Did you know that meth Amphetamines came from the Nazis. They, they created that, and they rationed them out to themselves. In other words, everybody that was fighting in the army was on meth. That's why it was so easy to manipulate them, to get them to do what they wanted. Yeah, Jim? Blitzkrieg. They just went and took, right. Yep. And they, they never slept. They never really had to eat because they was always on meth. That's why they were dominating the world. Dominating the world. All right, let me, let me get back to here. That's how Nimrod was. So this was the first Hitler. This was the first uh, 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 Putin. Yes, sir. Be considered the first king after the flood. Ruler, king, okay. But it was self-appointed. Right. Yeah, self-appointed. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to, yeah, yeah, I would say, I would say yes. Uh, uh, watch this, watch this. Uh, a Jerusalem Targum, which is a Bible, uh, 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 early Hebrew, he was powerful in hunting and in wickedness before the Lord, for he was a hunter of the sons of men. And he said to them, depart from the judgment, watch, listen to what he says now, depart from the judgment of the Lord and adhere to the judgment of Nimrod. In other words, you better not be fearing God. You need, right, you, 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 everybody on the same page on this? Everybody getting a good picture of who Nimrod was and why Nim, being a Nimrod is not a good thing? All right, here, so, so therefore it is said, as Nimrod the strong one, the strong in hunting, and the wickedness before the Lord. And uh, that's, that's what he was before the Lord. Uh, a guy named Ginsburg quotes from the Jewish legend and says this, the great success that attended all of Nimrod's undertaking produced a sinister effect. 
and everything. And what, means, what that means is that everything he touched was, was touched sinisterly. In other words, was wicked for his touch. You, you, you got to remember, you got to remember, God wiped the earth clean because of men like him. But he wasn't, he wasn't, he was by himself now. Everybody else was doing what was good, and Bible quotes this, and I, I don't know where I'm quoting it from, but the Bible quotes this, when men do good in their own eyes. So that's how, that's how, that, that's how uh, the world before the flood was happening, and now Nimrod is saying the strongest, only the strong survive. I'm going to wipe out all the people so I alone can stand above, and folk will look at me because they only hear God. They can see me, and I see me coming, and I'm better than God. I'm more powerful than God. I'll, I'll, rip your, I'll rip your hearts out. In other words, he was, all, he was always selling what we used to call in Cherry Hill, wolf tickets. Y'all, somebody been in Cherry Hill? Y'all never? Okay, so I guess it wasn't just in Cherry Hill, huh? And folk would knew how to talk, but he knew how to back it up too. He knew how to do the, all of the crazy things that he said he was going to do, right? All right, so Ginsburg quotes this, the great success attended all of Nimrod's undertaking produced a sinister effect. Men no longer trusted God. You remember, now watch this. They still was pretty much together. They, they were spreading out now, but they still, still was pretty much in the same area. They could still walk to where an auntie lived. They could still do those kind of things. Even though they had moved from here to there, it wasn't that far away. It wasn't like it was on another continent. It was still in that European kind of African area where, and where the continents were all together. All right, watch this, watch this. Uh, but rather, they, he said, the men no longer trusted God, but rather in their own prowess and ability. And we've seen this happen even in modern day, where folks start, stop, stop depending on God and start depending on their knowledge. You know, they go, they go to school, and, and I've seen it, and, I, and, and the young people, and I've seen it, uh, everybody, every time somebody comes back from college after spending one semester, they know the world. They know exactly what it's all about. They're going to tell you, I don't know why you're serving a God that you can't touch, you can't see, you can't exist, don't exist. And then you got to try to explain to them, it's not about what we know, it's about the faith we have. You know, so it, 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 it's tough. But, 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 but you train a child when they are young that when they grow old, they won't depart, right? They gonna get crazy in here. You, you see how crazy you got or crazy you still are. Well, either which way, either which way. All right, watch this. Nimrod tried to convert the whole world to his way of thinking. He wanted to be the first emperor. He wanted to be the first king. They didn't even have a word for emperor. They didn't even have a word for king when, when he was trying to take over. He just knew I was in charge, and I will take down anybody who think they're bigger and badder than me, including, including God. Because you got to remember that, that Noah was a man of faith, so his family knew about what had happened. This wasn't, this wasn't, uh, they weren't oblivious to the flood. They weren't oblivious to this. They knew who God was. And so everybody, even down to his descendants, started saying, well, we don't, see, we don't talk to God like Noah talked to God. We don't do what God do. We don't see him all the time. We can do what we want to do. You know how when the cat's away? Right, right, right. So hence, it is likely that Nimrod, having a quiet power, and that's what you do, you acquire power, uh, used it for tyranny and oppression. You know anybody that sound like that? That just use it to beat down other people. Yeah. Hey, Miss Beverly, how you doing? Uh, so, so, beat that. Watch this. And by uh, rapping and by and or than just like raping and pillaging, this is what he did. This is what he did. This is what he encouraged. Uh, founded the domination, which was the first distinguished, which was first distinguished by the name of a kingdom on the face of the earth. How many kingdoms have been founded in the same way? In other words, this became a kingdom. He became the king. But how many other kingdoms 
have been founded the same way. Most of the time, when folk are trying to rob and pillage, take from you and, and they get or they receive, we can see all of the evilness that it took place. Nobody, and I can say this with very much confidence, nobody takes over another man's home unless the man is bound. That, that, that's, that's the word. Now, I know I quoted it kind of wrong, but the word said, how can he take over the house if the man ain't bound? Because the man going to fight for his home. So they, nobody ever peacefully walked in and took over. Uh, uh, the pilgrims that walk over and say, oh, and the, and he is, and, or, the, or the Native Americans say, here you go. No, they had to kill him or try to kill him just to take what was, what was theirs to, to it to belong to him. And, and, and uh, 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 the truth goes to the victors or history goes to the victors. In other words, I get to tell the story the way I want to tell it when I win. When, when, when I win. If, if I win, I get to tell a story the way I want to. You know, that's, that's, that's what it is. So Nimrod wins. Uh, from the time, watch this. How many, how many kingdoms have been founded in the same way in various ages uh, and nations from the time to the present? From the Nimrods of the earth, God delivered the world. And he always, he always will, and he always do. Anybody got any questions? We always did down from verse 13 now. Questions on that? I know I was doing a lot of talking, but I wanted to make sure I got it. Go ahead, Brother Jerry. Stories that actually Nimrod's birthday was December the 25th, mm -hmm. and that's where the Christmas tradition actually started um, when the um, Christians was proselytizing the world. They allowed some groups because of their strong faith in their in their God. Remember, I was actually a, a God. They allowed them to keep some of their traditions. And as time moved forward, it got melded into the tradition of Christian as Jesus is Christmas. That's 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 some some something I read. Where did that come from? Where did you get where did you get that what you just said? From Google. From Google. Google. You Googled it. <laughs> okay, okay. 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 Uh, listen, listen. I I have never heard that. Uh, but it's not, it's not far-fetched. It's not far-fetched. We, we would try most of the time, every last one of our Christian traditions, every one of our holidays have been trying to cover up a pagan holiday. It, it's not, it's not, that's not, doesn't sound odd to me. I, I've never heard it, but it doesn't sound odd. We, we, we want to change things around. We want to build, we want to build our cathedrals on cemeteries. Okay, so I'm just saying, you know, that's what we want to do. Yes, sir. This is correct. It is a lot of history written of a lot of civilizations uh, over the world that does have a uh, tradition of some, someone like Nimrod or other uh, people that were worshipped on December I'm 25th. Sorry. Sorry. So, so, so everybody on the same page on that? So, so thank you for that, but, you, but you, all you did was segue us into to knowing that men was, are still corrupt, uh, that the human, human without God, we choose the wrong way every time. So we got to try to make it, we got to try to make it look right. So, so, so we'll come and, and we'll try to take your land, but we'll say it was a Thanksgiving feast. You, you, you feel me on this? That's what we'll say. That they came to us and they showed us how to farm and we showed them how to do this and we all lived together nice and harmony. No, that's not what happened. But we get to tell a story because we won. You know, we won. We, this is how we did. You know, we always wanted to be the cowboys and, and never the Indians. And, and because we wanted to be the cowboys, because the way they portrayed it is that the cowboys always won. And the cowboys weren't the savages. These guys were the savages. But let's hear it from their side of the story and see if we feel the same way, right? Because be honest with you, uh, that's the way they, they build in slavery. You know, they, they tell it that it was biblical. This, we were supposed to be. And remember, we talked about this a little earlier. Because we were descendants of Ham. And Ham, because 
of, of, of walking backwards. We talked about this last week, right? Okay, okay, okay. Now, I, I don't want to get jump back in here. Let's, let's, go, let's read some more of these crazy names. Began to Ludim and Anamim and the Habim. Thirteen. And not to him. And Paphrozim and Kasluhim, out of whom came Philistim and Kaptarim. And Canaan begat Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth, and the Jebusite, and the Amorite, and the Girgashite, and the Hivite, and the Archite, and the Sinite, and the Arvadite, and the Zemarite, and the Hamathite, and afterward were the families of the Canaanites spread abroad. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as thou comest to Gerar, unto Gaza, as thou goest, unto Sodom and Gomorrah, and Abma and Zeboim, even unto Lashah. Now, I'm going to stop you because we heard some names we were familiar with. I know they were calling out a whole bunch of ites, but you heard some names in there that, you, that made sense to you. So you heard Sodom, you heard Gomorrah. What else did you hear? Hittites, we, we heard them before. Uh, Canaanites, those are the ones I really wanted to talk about because Canaan is, 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 was named after the sun. That's Canaan was a son's name, but the, the land Canaan, and Canaan was the land flowing with, with what? Milk and honey, right? Right? And Canaan is, was the promised land. So they, got, they were already here. They were already here, and yet somewhere along the line they got dispersed, right? So we heard some of those names. We're in, we in verse 19. The son of Sidon, and I'm just going to read a little bit of this. The family of Sidon, the son of Canaan, went north and is related to the Hittites and Lebanese, right? And the Sinites, many people believe the Oriental or the Asian folk came from them, right? Okay, all right. Anybody, anybody, watch. These were the sons of Ham. I'm in verse 20. I'm in verse 20. I'm moving pretty fast because I want to get past this. I want to get past this, but I, but I want to... I don't want to slow it down enough where we can get something from it. Watch this. Well, yeah, it's too much. It's too much. Uh, the, uh, in verse 20, these were the sons of Ham, according to their families, according to their language, in their lands, and in their nation, the descendants. And, oh, let me go ahead and play this. These are the sons of Ham, after their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations. Unto Shem also, the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth, the elder, even to him were children born, the children of Shem, Elam, and Ashur, and Arphaxad, and Lud, and Aram. And the children of Aram, Uz, and Hul, and Gether, and Mash. And Arphaxad begat Salah, and Salah begat Eber. And unto Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided. And his brother's name was Joktan. And Joktan begat Almadad, and Shaleth, and Hazamaveth, and Jerah, and Hadaram, and Uzal, and Dikla, and Obal, and Abimael, and Sheba, and Ophir, and Havilah, and Jobab. All these were the sons of Joktan. And their dwelling was from Mesha, as thou goest unto Sephar, the mount of the east. These are the sons of Shem after their families, after their tongues, in their lands, after their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations, in their nations, and by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. Now, okay, all right, so we got all these names that are going on, and I know you read some names or you walked over some names that you are familiar with. Anybody got another name that you heard in there that... that uh, 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 you're familiar with, or at least could say, I heard of that one. It, anybody? Anybody at all? Yes. Uh, Jobab was supposed to be Job? Oh, oh okay, that was a son. Okay, all the sons of Jobab was Jobab. I saw Jobab in there. But watch this. This is what I want. Anybody heard Sheba before? Now, that, that's a person. That's a man's name, so it wasn't the same person that we talking about, but that's a, that's a name. But I wanted to give you all another name, and it says, uh, uh, in the 23rd verse, it names the sons of Aram. The first son of name of Aram was Uz. That's where Job was from. Job was from the land. See, they named the land after the sons. So Job, who we talked about here, it, it was, uh, was from the land of Uz, 
right, right? Not ours, but us, yeah. Shift, right. Oh, oh man, get away from here. I don't know. Don't, don't hand him the mic. <laughs> we ain't got time for that, but we will. We ain't got time for it today, but we're going to talk about it. Right, so, it, so we're, in verse, we're in verse 32. Uh, we're going go, to keep on moving. We're going to go right to the next chapter. Did I get, did I get, nope, I'm, I'm late. I, I try to get here before 7 o'clock, but I'm late. All right, so, so we're going to the next chapter, okay? All right, let's, let's, let's move. We're going to chapter 11. Okay? Now, I think we can, I think we can read these. I think, I think we can. I, I, I'll see when I get there. All right, I'm going to read the first four verses. Uh, you follow me along if you can. Now, the whole earth had one language. I mean, I'm even going to pause right there. The whole earth had one language. All right? And one speech. Why would he repeat that? Why would he say language and speech as if those were different? Because they are. Anybody ever heard of this term that is, that's in the English language, but it's called Ebonics? All right, so you're talking English. You ever listen to an English person from England talk? And you got to listen real close because they speak in English, but it don't quite sound. Yeah, yeah. So it, it don't quite sound like we understand it. So that's why they said language and speech, because it could be the same language, but not the same speech. But they were of one language, one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. Then they said one to another, come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. And that's that's men. Now, listen, you remember Nimrod was in charge of Babel, right? That's, that, we go back to the 10th chapter, it will tell us that Nimrod was in charge of these towns. So, so most likely, it's Nimrod running the show, most likely. Uh, it doesn't say it here, but most likely that's what's happening. Watch. If we accept the biblical teaching that mankind has an original uh, was, was, has a common origin in Adam, then this simply makes sense that we had the same language and the same speech. If we came from the same place, and, and they all came from uh, uh, Noah, so Noah didn't speak something different. <laughs> Noah and his family spoke the same language. Now, it, got, it changed as it went to, to other people, so, but they said it had the same language, the same speech. This, this, this right here is something we read about when we were in Bible, st uh, Bible st school or Sunday school, and we know about the Tower of Babel. If you spent any time at BTU, you knew what the Tower of Babel was, right? And so here we are on the precipice of this tower, and we're about to learn why is this so important? Why is this needed? Why was this entered into the Bible? Why are we talking about this right now? Is this necessary? Could we not have skipped this story? The answer is no. Watch why. Watch why. It simply makes sense that if we came from the same place or the same person that, 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 that we had the same language. That there was a time when humanity spoke one language instead of the hundreds they do today was, is absolutely you can think about it. You can say, yeah, that makes sense. And most of the time, and, and I don't know about you, but I, I can only talk about me, most of the time, now again, I don't know your intellect, I, I can only talk about mine and how I perceive things. Most of the time, I'm just trying to make sense of this thing. Most of the time, I'm just trying to figure out uh, 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 what the word of God is saying. There's a Bible that I, that, not a Bible, sorry, there's a book uh, and when I took uh, hermeneutics class, uh, uh, hermeneutics, 
uh, it said that the Bible makes sense. It's by a man named Ruger. And it said the Bible makes sense. And it starts talking about why it makes sense. And all we ever trying to do is make sense of any instructions that we've given. Let, let, me, let me see if I can't prove this point. Whenever you tell your children to do something, what's the word, what's the, what's the next thing coming out of their mouth? Why? why? All they want to do is make sense of what you just asked them to do. Why? Now, now, when I was growing I said your children, because when I was growing up, we never asked why. No, no, we never asked why. We might say woo, but we never got out the eye. We never get out, because we got hit in our head if you had, had anything else to say. And my mother was good at throwing shoes. And whatever they got in their hand. Whatever, you right, you right. My father used to work on cars. So whatever he had in his hand, right? <laughs> you, th you think I just, this natural knot right there, you, that's what you think. You think that's a natural knot, but I got some stories to tell you. Watch, watch this. Um, the land of Shinar was a term used also of Babylon. Okay? Uh, so if, if you hear the, wor the word uh, Babylon, it also could be right coincide with the land uh, Shinar, which they said they had built up uh, there. Uh, the multiple descendants from the ark came together to build a great city and a tower. It was not just a tower. It was not just a, a big tower sitting in the middle of the plain. No, their intent was to build a city. Now, a city to do what? The Bible says to make a name for ourselves. So they wanted to build a name for ourselves amongst who? These are all the people that's here. Who are you making a name for? For our families to come. They will talk about us when we're gone. So I got to put a legacy, really, is what they're saying. I'm going to leave a legacy here that folk can still talk about me when I'm gone. And us. Our generation, they're going to talk about us. That's what their job was. That's what they, because all they saw in their future was their families. That's all they saw. They didn't see this great big world that it has become today. That, they didn't have that kind of insight and foresight. All they saw was we all going to be together, and the only people going to remember us is our family. We're going to build this big tower. And the Bible says they were trying to get to the heavens. Now, we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but why do you think, if I can be so bold, is why was he trying to get to heaven? No, no, I'm not asking you to say something. I'm asking you to run over there with the microphone so we can hear that guy. <laughs> I'm looking at something. <laughs> He's studying the word. He's <laughs> in Bible study. What is he so what did you say? What did you Old Nimrod wanted to try to be God. He wanted to try to be God. Right, right, right. Well, is, that, is that what you think? Is everybody thinking the same thing? Is everybody thinking the same? What, well, watch this. He knew there was a God, though. Uh -huh. Right, right? So, so what, what if we say he wanted to try to keep an eye on the competition? Uh -huh. <laughs> so he's going to build a, 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 a tower to heaven so he can, because he, he knew he couldn't get to God. But if I keep an eye on him, I, you know, we're going to be on the same level. Yeah, so another person was saying that too. There was another guy who always thought he could be to be where God is. Right, right, right. So watch this. Listen how this goes. Uh, the multiple descendants of Ark came together to build a great city and tower in rebellion against God's command to spread out all over the earth. God told them to go ahead and spread out. Make that, inhabit the earth. Inhabit the earth. And they decided, we're going to build a big city right here. I'm going to do exactly the opposite of what God told me to do. I, I'm going to rebel against him. This is open rebellion. This is, I'm going to do my own thing. This is me leading a group of folk who are going directly against God. And we have been part of those groups. I 
going to start talking about something else, but I'm going I'm to stop. Go ahead, Brother Bernard. Could we go to uh, uh, Deuteronomy 1, please? I, I want to see something there. Can, can you go to Deuteronomy 1? Because we're going to stay right here. You go to Deuteronomy and read that for us. Can we go? We ain't no. going. We ain't following you. Everybody got their Bibles out. Yeah, they do. They got them right in Genesis. Go to Deuteronomy 1 and tell me what it says. I'm, I'm, I'm in Deuteronomy 1, uh, verse 28. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I imagine this is still uh, uh, Nimrod talking. Mm -hmm. uh, whither shall we go up? Our brethren, uh, he have discouraged our heart, saying the people is greater and taller than we. The cities are great and walled up to heaven, and more will we have seen the sons of the Anna Kim dead. So, so what is that saying? It, it, it's saying that they were going up because, like you saying, there was some other people that they were uh, really afraid of. Not at this time. Not at that. Not at this time. Maybe in Deuteronomy when we get there, maybe at that time. But not at this time. This time it was just them, and they were trying to do. They were battling what they thought was God. I'm, we gonna open really bell again. They said they was using baked bricks and asphalt for mortar. Men built a tower that was both strong and waterproof. Listen, 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 listen what they did. They used asphalt. Yeah, you know what asphalt is. So, so they used it, bricks and asphalt to build this tower. That it was not only strong, but it was waterproof. Now, let me tell you about the rebellion here. Y all, y all, everybody on the same page? All right, watch this, watch this. Even as Noah used the same, is that me? Is that me? E even as Noah used the same material in waterproofing the ark in Genesis 6.14, later Moses' mother used the same material in waterproofing his, ba his basket. He was waterproof. Watch this. Archaeologists has revealed that this kind of kennel fire brick and asphalt construction was common in the ancient Babylon. The heart of the uh, uh, the heart and the material relevant to the Tower of Babel shows that it was not only disobedient to God's command to fill the earth. Right? Watch this. But it also shows that man did not believe God when he said he would never flood the earth again. How can we prove that? They built a tower out of what? Waterproof material. Why would you build a tower off of waterproof material when, see they were trying to get, watch this, watch this, watch this, listen, don't this make sense? They were trying to get above the flood. See, they, they're right, right. That's right. So you look at this like this, that they were trying to get to God. No. They weren't even trying to keep an eye on God. They were trying to get above the flood. Because if it happened once, it just might happen again, even if God said it wouldn't. We're going to build this tower out of waterproof material. That way when the flood comes, we can go up the tower. Now listen. Even if you've never heard that before, don't it make sense? Even if you never thought about it like that before, and all we ever trying to do, all we ever trying to do is make sense of this, that we might be able to live our life like this. This is the standard we want to set. Right? Right? A waterproof tower was made to protect man against a future rainfall. This was a strong statement of self against God. He ain't going to do this to us again. This time, oh, what, what, what mama used to say. This is what, this is what mama said. This, this is what mama said. Uh, uh, do it to me once. Shame, shame on you. But if you do it to me twice, shame on me, right? So they were like, ain't going to be no shame on us. So you ain't going to do it to me twice, right? Right? So here, the top of the tower was intended to be in the heavens. 
it is doubtful that they thought they could build a tower to heaven. It's more likely uh, they built the tower as an observation point of the heavens. In other words, like I said, it was kind of looking. I wanted to see. It was built unto the heavens. Most astro astrological or occult practices have a history back to Babel. In other words, most of the witches, most of the warlocks, uh, that's what a cult is. They believed in the Tower of Babel, and that, that's why when you see a lot of the mystical and stuff, they got a tower. Whenever you see the witches and, and things of that nature and, and, and that magical stuff and that, all that kind of, they, they have a tower. There's a story, there was a story written by Stephen King that called The Dark Tower. Anybody ever read that book? Well, either way, you have? So, so it's all, that's where the mystical stuff happens. That's where all that mystery, so, they, so it, it dates back to that. Uh, if they really wanted to build a tower to reach heaven, it is unlikely that they started in the plain. In other words, they, they wouldn't have started down here. If they wanted to build a tower to heaven, they would have got halfway up a mountain to do that. If I really wanted to be higher, if I wanted to get it higher, let's start from a higher place. That don't, don't, why we got to start at the bottom and try to build all the way up. We could start in the mountains and get, get further up, right, right, right? It just, it just makes sense, all right? The tower was real. The ancient Greek historian Herodias said the Tower of Babel still stood in his day, and he saw it. So even in, in the, the Greek philosopher. Watch this, uh, verse five. What time we got? Make sure I'm on time. Oh, we got good time. All right, verse five. Here we go. Somebody grab verse five for me. Read five to nine. And who, who gonna raise their hand? Read that for me. All the way back there. You, you got you got far to go. No, I want. All the way back. I'm grab somebody. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower. Oh. You ready? It's on. Yeah, we got you. Go. Go ahead, loud mouth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men built. I'm going to stop you. What happened here? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How did the Lord come down. The Bible says the Lord came down? Wait a minute. So, so if he came down, did he come down in spirit? How did he come down? Somebody tell me how the Lord came. The Bible says the Lord came down. And listen, we believe what the word says. All right, so we're not doubting that the Lord came down. I'm just asking a question, how did he come down? Did he come down and spirit dwelt within? With, with, how did he come down? Came down the spirit? Anybody else? Watch this. What, what, look, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I throw something at you? Can I, can I throw something at you? Because it's Bible study. See, sometimes you got to throw a wrench into in people's programming and make them think again. Can I say, he came down again? How did he come down the first, a second time? In hey, Jesus. What's, what's to say? What's to say he didn't do that already? What's to say that when he came down to check him out, he didn't come down like Jesus? What's to say that? What's, what's to say? Nothing is to say. It. He probably came down like a man, walked amongst them, checking it out. Anybody ever see Undercover Boss? Anybody ever see that? Anybody ever see that? And he's just kind of walking around like he's a regular person. And, 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 and listen, listen, well, I saw one where the boss got fired. He didn't do his job enough or, or the people were harder on him and they didn't even know he was the boss. I guarantee you, he walked around there like this. Oh, so what we doing? We building this tower? Uh, where we going to build it to? Oh, it, oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty high. We going to keep going up there? Is that what we going to do? Yeah, man, it's going to be all over. Go ahead, John. 
Wait a minute, hold on, John. Come on, brother Bernard. Bernard said, I'm thin enough. Also, in the beginning, he came down and walked with Adam with Adam. Right. In the cool of the day. Yes, sir. God was just always down here. He just, they just hanging around, just seeing his favorite people, just talking to them, walking with them. I, I, I guarantee you, at some point in time, you've entertained an angel and unaware. I guarantee you, every time. So it's not hard pressed for us to realize and think that Jesus walked amongst the people at the Tower of Babel. Now, they might not have called himself Jesus at the time, but he said he, he struck Yahshua or Yahshua. He called himself and he walked with him. That, that kind of that kind of makes sense to me that that would happen. I believe, I believe that God could do that. The Bible did not skip over it. The Bible says, and, and, and Sister Corporu said the same thing. Go, go ahead and give, her, give it back to her. She said, she said, and the Lord, and God actually, came down and, and, and to check out the tower. I came down to check out the work. Undercover boss. Go ahead. Finish reading. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men built. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop you. Watch this. He did not say, Nothing will be, they cannot accomplish anything. If, they, if I, if I, they, he didn't say they will accomplish a lot of things. No, what he said was, they're going to do a whole bunch of stuff. It, it, because whatever their imagination comes up with, that's what they're going to do. Sometimes they're going to do stuff they can't do. And they're going to hurt themselves. Eh, what did he say after that? Go ahead, Sister Corporal. Verse 7. I'm going to stop you. What did he say? Let us. Wait a minute. Who are we talking to? He added again. Who is he? Who is he talking to? It said God, the Lord came down. Then he's talk, talking about what the people was going to do if he let them keep doing it. And then he says, let us. Who is us? Father, Son, Holy Ghost. It mentions the Trinity right here, and we missed it. Remember? Remember in the Garden? In the Garden of Eden, he said, let us. Didn't he, didn't he say that? The Bible also says in John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. The same in the beginning. We talking about the beginning. This is Genesis. This is the beginning. It must have been here. He might have been talking to Father, Son, Holy Ghost. He might have just been talking to the Word, which is the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. That's his Word, right? Even if we never thought about it before, doesn't it make sense? Doesn't it make sense? And we can't always wrap our head around all of the things that the Word of God says, but this one we can probably do that. I could probably just make sense. He said, Let us. First, he comes down, then he starts talking to himself. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, come on, come on. They always together. That's like saying Reuben, Scott, and me. All, all, we always together. Some people can't even tell us apart. And if you talk to Scott long enough, he'll say he the pastor. <laughs> Somebody was handing him envelopes Sunday, and he was taking them. Thank you. Thank you. No, he wasn't, y'all. No, he wasn't. I just made, I just made that. But that's, but doesn't it make, can't you look at it and say, hey, come on, Sister Corporal, finish reading that. 
Seven verse, Sister Corporal. He, what's she trying to do? Fix the mic? Read into the mic. I can hear you. I can, but the people on, on the internet might not be. Go to. Let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth. I'm going to stop. And they left I'm going to stop you right there because I need to explain this part right here. In the, in the first part, God says this. He says, be fruitful and multiply and go abroad in the face. Fill the earth is what he says. Fill the earth. Let me, let me see if I can't make us understand this part. God gives us instructions daily. He tells us things daily. Sometimes we don't do what God has instructed us to do. But guess what? God going to get his word out and God going to get it done if he got to do it himself. In other words, since you didn't do it and I got to come down here and get it done, this is how we're going to do it now. Now, 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 now I'm, I'm going to try to go back to my childhood just a little bit because I do this a lot. But when we were given instructions to do something in the house and it didn't get accomplished the way mama thought it was going to be, she would say to us, you might want to do this yourself. You don't want me coming down here and getting it done for you. You're not going to like the way I do it. You ain't going to like that. It ain't going to make you happy the way I do it. I know somebody here understands that. When God came down and told him to do it this way, and they decided to do it that way, God said, no, 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 this is not how you're going to do it. You're going to do it the way I said do it. And this is how I'm going to get it done. So now i got to confound all that language. He talks to himself. He talks to Jesus. He talks to the Holy Spirit. And he says, you know what we need to do? We're going to go down there and we're going to confound the language. We're going to make them not understand each other. Because you know how much stuff they can get done when they understand each other. And then listen, listen, listen. I, I really have a sermon right there. I really could stop right there and talk about a church that understands each other, a church that can, how much we can accomplish when you understand each other and everybody not talking some different language. We're all on the same page and everybody have, following the same vision and understand what God is asking from all of us. Yes, it, we can get a lot accomplished, but most of the time we walk around like the Tower of Babel. I don't understand her. I don't understand him. I don't understand why he's doing this. I don't understand how... And God has to get in the midst of us so we can separate those and put them on this side, put them on this side. Everybody who talk French over there, everybody who talk English over there, everybody talk Spanish back there. And then they got to go, I got to find somebody to talk the way I talk. You know why you jump from church to church? Because one of them churches don't speak your language. This is my third church in five years. Why? They didn't talk the way I wanted to, so I went over there. And they didn't say what I like to say. Because folk will leave for the dumbest reasons. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on, but. Because but means what? <laughs> but, then, but then, when they was out in the street, and they would go to the bar and have a, a, a problem at the bar, and they'll turn around and go right back to the same bar. But oh. you won't go back to the same church. Oh, what is it? <laughs> and they done had a disagreement at the yes, bar. Because yes. mm, you, can't, can't, you can deal with drunk folk, you just can't deal with church folk. <laughs> is, that the, is, that the, is that the case? I got you. I got, come on, wait a minute. Go back up there, man. He ain't finished. I want to read the nine. I want to read the nine. Thank, thank you. Thank you. But, 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 but. But in our head, you say to yourself, don't think, oh, no, no, can't do it. All right, 7.30. I'm sorry, I apologize. It's 7.30. It's 7 let's, let's, let's dismiss. Anybody got anything they want to add? I don't, I don't want to jump back into it. I got a lot of stuff that's sitting on this plate, and I could keep on rolling, but I don't want to do that. I do not. <laughs> 7.30. 7 
I, and, and you know, sometimes I go off on a tangent, and y'all gotta, y'all gotta, you know, do me like Bernard do in, in, in similar to the New Testament. A quick suggestion. A quick suggestion. I, I, I love Matt. Uh-huh. I was thinking about the people also, like, you know, going through the different places. Uh-huh. Uh, we got some homework for you uh, back there, uh, media ministry. We, we need, she, she got, she got, a, she put a, you, uh, you, so you want me to go survey and serve? All right, all right, we got, we, we got some visual stuff we need to get worked on. We're going to try, we're going to try to work that out, Sister Hill. Because she, she ready, she ready, she, she's back there ready. She, she She's been trying to get more involved in this, in, in this Bible study as it is. So that's good. That's good. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Come on, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bow our heads. We say thank you once again for allowing us to come into your house and to study your word. Lord, if we said something that was not according to your word, please forgive us. Blame it on our heads and not our hearts, Lord, because we love you. And we're just asking that you take care of us. We ask you to do what you've always done. You said you'd be with us always, even until the end of the world. Now, Heavenly Father, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, guide us safely back home. Watch over us in this cruel, cruel world, Heavenly Father. God, help us to be that shining light that this neighborhood and this city and this state needs, that somebody can depend on us to hold up the blood-stained banner. We love you, Lord, until we meet again. In Jesus' name we say, amen. amen. Bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you.